right, guys. Check one. Well, we're at the Starling Games slash something else booth at Origins Game Fair. It's also the home of Tabletop Tycoon, which is Dan. You guys know Dan from Games Alux. And we're going to talk to... Tamirma. Are you on there? I got you. You got me. Holy cow. About... Archmage. Go. Oh, wait. I got to turn it around. All right. Hi, my name is Tamirma. I'm the designer of Archmage. <laughs> As you might guess, Archmage is set in a fantasy universe that has fallen into ruin. We seem to be having that problem with fantasy universes lately. In this one, it's no different. Fortunately, there are six mythic races that are perver preserving shreds of magic, and we're going to go out, meet them, and learn a little back. So let's flip over here. So we've set the game up part of the way through, but at the start of the game, you're going to be in the unexplored state, so all the tiles will be grayed out like this. And over the course of the game, you'll have the opportunity to go out and explore the land. The main hook of the game is the magic system. So I'm going to spend the early part of the demo teaching you some magic. Because like any good fantasy novel, you need a compelling magic system. So on the wheel of magic, there are six interlocking spheres of magic. Each one has a very distinct flavor. Do you want to smite your enemies in combat, or are you more defensive? Do you want to manipulate the board? Do you want to manipulate resources in the game? Do you want to be efficient? Or do you just want to be a general jerk to your opponents? All of those are available as options. So on the map, I'm going to visit the mythic races in the center with my mage. And when I visit the gnomes, I can trade them a specific resource, and they will initiate apprentices for me into the school of magic that they know. So coming back to my magic board, I would give up relics, and they in turn would teach me magic. So I would plant some apprentices right on the outer edge of this fundamental sphere, or of the sphere of magic, and that's a fundamental spell area around the side. Level one. And I search my deck of 18 cards, all of which are shared by the players. Nice foil versions in the deluxe. I find the fundamental spell in the yellow sphere of magic. And I'm going to add that to my player tableau as a power that I can use going forward. There are six fundamental spells in the game, six advanced level spells, and six master level spells on the wheel. So if I fast forward a little bit, I can learn magic from the elves in time magic, and I can learn nature magic from the dryads, placing apprentices into the fundamental areas of those spheres. But I'm a human mage. I'm not necessarily content to play around with these entry level spells. I'm going to return to my tower and start to weave magic together. So I'm going to duel two apprentices from adjacent spheres. One of them gets kicked back to my company, and the other one now stands as a proud advanced mage who knows a, a new spell that is a combination of the green and yellow spheres. I'm going to add that to my tableau as a new power. Similarly, I could combine purple and yellow and you learn a fancy new yellow-purple spell for my tableau. The catch being, if I ever leave an area unattended, I have to give up that spell back into my deck. So there's going to be tension in the game. Do I push my Wheel of Magic further and further to uh, advanced spells and add very powerful spells to my deck at the expense of diversity of spells, where I'm no longer going to have the same uh, array of spells in my tableau? No problem. I can always go back out on the map, train some new apprentices, and then return to my tower and spend them again as much as I wish to progress through the, through the system and update my tab. So switching gears a little, I'm going to walk you through a quick turn of the game. It starts with an upkeep phase, where any spells I've cast in the previous turns come back to a reset ability. And the timer of the game is these planets in the sky. The prophecy says when all six planets align, a new archmage will be crowned. So I'm going to pick a planet and move it one turn inwards and gain one relic of that type. I know the game is going to be over when all these planets start to align in the center of the board, which should happen for all players on the same turn. So that's the preparation phase of my turn. Then we're going to switch out to the map at large. And wherever my mage starts, he's got five action points to spend. So he can use those action points simply to move. And if he enters into an unclaimed hex, he can immediately claim that. He can use those action points to explore. And he can immediately claim that hex and get a 
a small bonus of one relic of the appropriate type, or I can use them to attack. So for one movement point, I can kill this opponent apprentice, taking him into that player's graveyard bag, the supply, not back into the player's company. I will gain blood for doing that attack, and my opponent will also gain one blood on their player board. And blood acts as the catch-up mechanic in the game. If we start really ganging up on one player, he's going to get a lot of blood, and can use that blood to then fuel offensive spells in the game to punch his way back on the map. So it's a thematic built-in catch-up mechanic. After I've spent my five movements in my, journey's en in my journey, I'm going to take a journey's end. So that determines where's my mage standing, what am I going to interact with? Am I going to interact with this town and gather from all of my current holdings? So if I gathered right now, I'd get three orange relics, two yellow relics, two green relics, a purple and a black relic. So you get a sudden infusion of relics onto your board if you take that journey's end action. I briefly mentioned interacting with the races who will train new apprentices. I can, I can go out to a camp and get new guys out of back out of my bag and have them join my company to be used again in the future. So preparation, journey, journey's end to interact with the map. Finally, when all the planets have aligned, we're going to do game end scoring. We're going to flip over this, and we're going to score points, first of all, for our magical knowledge. One point for each fundamental spell we've learned, two points for each advanced, and four points for each master level spell. So that's our personal board scoring. We're going to flip back to the map and do scoring for majorities on the map. In each of the five colors on the map, whoever's got the most hexes of that color, so white has three mines versus only one mine and one mine for the other players, he's going to score points for the majority in that color. We'll do that for all five colors, add it to your personal score, and that's your game end score. Whoever has the most victory points will be crowned the new Archmage. Wow. Very cool. Thank you. So this went through Kickstarter. It's shipping to backers in July 2018 and should release at Gen Con 2018. Followed very shortly into retail locations, both uh, brick and mortar and online re retailers. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd shake, but the camera will fall on the ground. <laughs>